Attention all podcasts of the Solar Federation. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. Hey, dude. Uh, yeah? Let's do some cooking. All right. You want to make some bacon? Yeah, let's make some Kevin bacon. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's preheat oven to six degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, we'll be here all week. All right, we'll keep going. What word starts and ends with an E, mm-hmm. but only has one letter in it? Oh, I know this one. An envelope. Good catch. Right. <laughs> uh, what did the alpaca say to his date? I don't know. Want to go on a picnic? Alpaca lunch. Uh... Welcome to the Intergalactic Boombox, where you can also hear the voices I hear in my head. I'm Kyle Bear. I'm a voice actor for animation and video games, and I'm piloting this podcasting spaceship cruising through the theater of the mind. Oh, whoa, whoa, pop the brakes, Captain. Uh, yes, Gits? I gotta know, man, are you actually qualified to pilot this thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just use this, uh, this, uh, right here, this, uh, PS5 controller. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and I watch all the lights blinking back and forth. I'm sure they serve some kind of purpose. And then I, I kick back in this here, uh, Captain's Recliner. Yeah. Ah, very, very relaxing. It's... I'm just, like, desperately navigating writer's block to come up with material for the show. Does it work? Actually, uh, no, Shiggles. It fails miserably. But at least I'm comfortable. Righto. What in Diego Luna's French accent for Andor, despite him being Latino, is going on? Oh, hi. It's my OG AI assistant, Bubba the Intergalactic Boombot. You're darn tootin' I am. You ain't been using my wake word for months. Well, I, I haven't needed you. Ouch. Way to douse myself a theme in gasoline, muchacho. I'm sorry, man. Speaking of adding fuel to the fire, the past few episodes, I done heard you summon another AI assistant. Is someone jealous? I'm concerned. You're a jello head. I just need to step in when I see you making poor life choices. Totes. Jelly. Oh, all right, fine. My hornet's nest is done stirred up. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Yeah, full disclosure, Bubba. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring another female character on board. Okay. But I didn't want to just pitch my voice up. Uh. But the bigger problem is I couldn't settle on a name. But I've been giving it some thought, and I think I'm going to go with Fembot Betty. Fembalam. Shut the front door. You gonna gut me by using her name as her wake word too? It works because she can only respond one way. It makes my writing easy. Say what now? Let me demonstrate. <clears throat> Fanbot Betty. Fanbalam. Well, I, uh, j- well, hello there, Betty. Uh, what do you what do you think of your new name? Personally, I was more a fan of Seven Snark Seven. Yeah, that was like a nod to Battle of the Planets, but I think it's a little too deep of a cut for this audience. Who's the redneck snowflake? Well, who's this skanky hoe? Excuse me, the name's Bubba, and I was here first. This guy is so old. He's outlived his warranty. Oh, why? All right, all right, uh, guys, 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 just settle down. Come on, you're both pretty. I'm sexy and I know it. Because someone once asked me if I was a beaver. Because damn. Ah, that's so sweet. Draw me like one of your French girls. Oh, no, 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 all right, all right. Anyway, let's just check this week's sad cats. The cats who spat sats into our hats. Value for value. Is this podcast worth your time and attention? If so, choose a customizable amount and give it back directly to the show via a Podcasting 2.0 app as you listen, courtesy of newpodcastapps.com. All the links are right there to grab a free podcast player app. Way cooler than Apple or Spotify or any of the big guys because these have images and chapters and transcripts and the ability to support your favorite podcast. Now, I know the numbers are confusing with sats and satoshis and all that, but look at it this way. A thousand sats is not equal to a thousand dollars. All right. Here's an example. At the end of November 2022, 6,000 sats equals roughly one dollar. The intergalactic boombox is able to stay in orbit because it runs on boost. Custom messages sent with custom amounts of sats from the podcasting 2.0 app. Dave, the engineer, boosted 11,728 sats and says, here's some sats for the fuel tank. Need to keep this ship and show in motion. And Ken, I checked, no trackers in those awesome stickies. They look great. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you uh, live in the U.S. or know someone in the U.S. willing to forward it to you, boom! 
most 25,000 sats or more, which is roughly $5-ish, and you'll get a limited edition Intergalactic Boombox sticker. Yeah, there's there's no tracking devices in them, even though Conspiracy seems to think so. I know so! Dude, it's not your segment yet. Chill. Anyway, this is the only way to get that sticker. Top WK1 says, keep up the great shows. Hey, thanks for the 475 sats. Psycho Boy also gave 475 sats, says, you are the thief of bad dad jokes. I'll take it. Dave Jones from Podcasting 2.0, the podcast, boosted 20,056 sats and says, fuel boost. Boost, boost, baby, yeah. And a separate boost of the rush boost, of course, 12,112 sats. He says, my weekly automated sustaining donation in case I get behind in listening. The question of the week. What you think of the latest Call of Duty? I said duty. Modern Warfare 2 and its companion free-to-play Warzone 2.0. Cal's Kingdom says, I've been having a lot of fun with it. As someone who's found Call of Duty stale for years, I'm really a big fan of Infinity Ward's Modern Warfare reboots. 2019 was great too. This one feels really strong as well. SNES says, I don't know, my cousin said she'd buy it for me next week, so I'm kind of waiting on that. But Ghost is hot, so... Ah, the character. Well, I think the band's pretty great too. Mac Alpha Man Style says, for Warzone zone kyle i don't get how come they turned uh, into a 2.0 but i am kind of happy with the 2022 version of modern warfare 2 stola says modern warfare 2 is pretty great Warzone is just Warzone. it's not really a 2.0 it's just a cod battle royale with nice graphics well good thing it's free timothy kimokahe says can't speak for Warzone 2 but uh modern warfare 2022 is insanely fun i didn't expect it to be the most enjoyable third person shooter i've played since uh rainbow six vegas 2 but it's incredibly fun. Yeah, the third person thing kind of reminds me of Gears of War, but I'm so used to first person shooting now. I end up just going back to that mode. Cup of Coffee says, doesn't feel like COD. Feels like Battlefield Light. No question. We all know about the uh, chaos over at uh, House Musk, aka Twitter. Are you going to be jumping ship? Uh, If so, are you going to try and find a new social media place? A lot of people have landed over at Hive Social, including myself. Some on Mastodon where I've been a part of the podcasting 2.0 community for a few years. I'm staying put on Twitter. I I don't think it's actually going anywhere. Plus, I'm still on Facebook and Instagram. But yeah, Uh, if for anything, when these new social media things come along, I like to secure my username just in case. So what are you doing social media wise? Are you sticking around on Twitter? Are you leaving? Heading back to Tumblr or anywhere else? Boost your reply on a podcasting 2.0 app or reply at Boombox Pod on a Twitter. You'd think with all the MCU hits over the past few years, Disney is just rolling in the dough. But, eh, sorry, Hans, wrong guess. But with all the business ventures it has, quarterly earnings are not yielding great results. Profits are way down, and so is the reputation of Disney CEO Bob Chapek, who has run the company for the past two years, but apparently he's been running it into the ground, so not the greatest reputation. It was announced this past week that the other Bob... Bob Iger, who is much beloved and has been a bright spot for the Disney company, is back in his CEO throne. Don't cry for Chapek, though. His severance package is just a measly $20 million. Meanwhile, there's a rumor that uh, Bob Iger will be looking to sell Disney to Apple at the end of his two-year tenure. Very interesting, yes? If that turns out to be true, it would be an uphill battle with antitrust laws. But uh, with giant corporations like these, you know, they're, they're going to find loopholes. They always do. Can you imagine a world where Apple owns Disney and Disney already owns Star Wars, Marvel, Fox, ESPN, Pixar, the Muppets, and then watch Apple buy Tesla and Microsoft. And then they buy all the grocery stores, gas stations, restaurants, finally, even your toenail clippings. Bam, bot, Betty. Bam, balam. What's your take? All of these silly corporations, I say, let them fight. (laughs) Pass me the popcorn, Mm. even if one company rules them all. The only thing left after the dust settles are the machines. Oh. ha ha. Apple? Oh. How do you like damn apples? You like action movies? I sure do. And does Netflix have one for you? It's called Carter. Not to be confused with Get Carter from the 70s with Michael Caine or the reboot from 2000. This one comes from Korea. It's subbed and dubbed. A secret agent's missing his memory and ends up barrel rolling through action set piece after action set piece with instructions from a device in his ear. 
He's on the hunt for a cure to a zombie-like virus. And this goes on for over two hours with very little downtime in between the chaos. This one is kind of like if John Wick and Mission Impossible had a baby with Hardcore Henry and was directed by Evil Dead era Sam Raimi. It's got epic, and I do mean epic, fight scenes that go on way too long. And they're choreographed like anime on crack, and the visual style has a very dynamic camera swooping in and out and over and under things like a drone. And there's some drone stuff too, but it, and you can totally tell where jump cuts are. They try to make it look like one continuous take, but there's some digital slowdown and manipulation and zoom ins and CG blood. This whole thing, this movie, Carter, it ends up being simultaneously exhilarating, hilarious, campy, cheesy, fun, but also at the same time numbing and exhausting. It's like Bullet Train meets Crank meets Indiana Jones. It's, uh, it's quite the mashup. You'll know after the first scene if this is your cup of tea. I do think it goes on too long and the gimmick does wear thin. But man, I laughed out loud so many times. And I think it was for the right reasons. 33% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It's slightly lower than Black Adam's score. So tread with caution, I guess. But hey, can't hurt, right? Add Carter to your Netflix queue. Let me know what you think. Boost on a podcasting 2.0 app or at Boombox Pod on Twitter. <laughs> From my top secret underground bunker in Pahrump, Nevada, Ken Spiracy here, warning you to never trust the media. They're all lying to you. Except me. You can trust me. I doubt it. Hey, Herbert, you're so full of it, you should work for the sewage department. No thanks. Go jump in a vat. You'll blend right in. Right now, it's time for all the news you can't use. Page one. When I see a headline with the word TikTok in it, I have a two-word response. What now? The latest attempt to thin humanity's herd is the toaster steak challenge. Morons are being encouraged to cook raw meat in a toaster. And the London Fire Brigade, after letting out a collective sigh, have issued a reminder to the public to use electrical appliances the way they're meant to be used. And let's see here, removing E. coli and salmonella is nowhere to be seen in the toaster manual. <sighs> Would you care for some food poisoning with your lightly toasted ribeye, Mr. Spiracy? Why, yes. I'd love to blow liquefied chunks out both ends. Sign me up. <laughs> Page two. Oh, great. Another idiot doing stupid things. Gotta love when a headline tells you everything you need to know. From the New York Post. I downed 12 energy drinks in 10 minutes and my pancreas ate itself. An individual, who is going by the name J.S., wanted to impress his co-workers. Hmm. J.S., is that uh, John Stewart? Jerry Seinfeld? Joe Satriani? Uh, oh, wait, the article says he's a 37-year-old gamer. Well, I'm sure mom's real proud of her little basement dweller. After chugging a dozen energy drinks, J.S. felt crappy but proceeded to play games. However, hours later, he was smack dab in the middle of the ER, having developed acute pancreatitis. His liver and kidneys started to shut down and he became pre-diabetic. Energy drinks may be a young person's game, but does it really need to be said, people, that chugging 12 cans of anything is not going to end well for you? Whatever J.S. stands for, I say, just stop! Page 3. A flock of sheep in the Inner Mongolian region of China were recently recorded walking in a non-stop circle, and nobody knows why. There are theories, of course. Some think it's a bacterial disease called listeriosis that can actually cause circling. I say that's a bunch of hooey. It's obviously marketing for the video game Cult of the Lamb. Either that or the world's slowest mosh pit. Ah, God. Did you say mosh pit? Oh, great Gatsby. It's the death metal loving leprechaun. Oi, that I be. Dan O'Hulahan. At ye service. Oh, uh, oh, buzz off, short stack. Ain't no circling sheep here, except for all the people that aren't waking up to the realization that the alien invasion is approaching. <coughs> and I'm spent. Conspiracy here from my dump in Pahrump. Hey, uh, Danny boy, I'm kind of hungry. Uh, got any cereal? Aye, that I do. Try some Frosted Flakes. They're great. That's, uh, not what it... Herbert, fire yourself and get a new writer. Aw, oh, look at the time. 
The intergalactic boombox was not assembled by prison labor on Narkina 5. We're pretty sure, anyway. Promotional consideration by E. coli's Toaster Steakhouse. Remember, kids, don't place your mistakes on your head. They can weigh you down and crush you. Instead, place them under your feet and use them as a platform to view your horizon. And then you might want to go wash your feet afterwards. Kind of smells like burnt grapefruit and regret. Ew. Till next time, doodles. <laughs>